What is going on everyone? Jace Two Cents here. And when I did the video about my 6700K build uh, last week, a lot of folks pointed out the fact that there's a front mounted radiator on there. And you can't do that because it's gonna heat up everything in your system and it's terrible and the world is gonna end as far as we know it and it's just bad for all of your parts. And I got to thinking, I've been putting front mounted radiators on computers for years and years and not once has any of those terrible doomsday type of predictions ever happened. So I thought maybe today we would just kind of go ahead and do, for the sake of science, a video here about comparing temperatures with the radiator mounted to the front and seeing if allowing warmer air to enter the front of the computer really makes a huge overall difference. The Mastercase 5 and Mastercase 5 Pro from Cooler Master combines modularity with creativity, giving you the freedom to build it your way. Make it yours by clicking the link down in the description. Okay, so hardware-wise, it is an Intel 6700K. It is overclocked. We'll probably be doing somewhere around 4.7 for this test at something like 1.3 volts, somewhere around there. We want to pump some heat. We don't want to... We want to really kind of go for some numbers here in this test. If we just run stock speeds, then I don't think anything would really be affected, which is actually a good thing, but we want to see in kind of a worst case scenario whether or not the claims of front-mounted radiators are going to cause problems temperature-wise for your parts. So it's a 6700K overclocked uh, Corsair H100i. We do have in here also a reference Titan X. Of course, they're all reference, but that is a blower style cooler. So it's gonna be getting all of its air from inside the case. The case cooling is not going to have any effect on the temperatures of the GPU, which is why I'm using a blower style cooler. All of its air it's getting is gonna be atmospheric air inside the case, which means if the front mounted radiator really is warming up the case, then we can go ahead and see that by using a blower style cooler because that's the only place it's getting air. If we use an atmospheric cooler where it's uh, circulating the air into the case and then the case has to exhaust it, then the case itself is gonna play more of a factor here than where things are placed. So that's why we're going with the blower cooler on the Titan X. We're going with the Titan X because it is the biggest, most powerful, hottest GPU core right now that uh, Nvidia has on a single uh, GPU. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's a Titan Z that has two GPUs, but that again, is a half exhaust, half recirculating cooler, which would not have worked very well for this test. Okay, so just to do some baseline numbers here, I have a laser temperature get probe as well as an air temperature meter. So right now the ambient temperature here in the room, let's go ahead and restart this, is sitting at 24 Celsius or 20 or 75 point, well now 75.2 Fahrenheit is what the air temperature is in this room. So now before we start the test, I'm gonna go ahead and set this on top of the exhaust fan here. I'm gonna let it measure the temperature of the air exiting the system here for, I don't know, about 60 seconds or so. And then that's our baseline. That's where we are right now before running any tests and running any sort of heat through the system and letting things kind of balance out. And then we'll run it through load, get our numbers, make sure the ambient temperature in the room is the same. I've got the air running to keep it pretty consistent. Then we'll do it again and compare. And then we'll do the same thing with the GPU. Okay, so the air coming out of the computer is measuring 77.0 Fahrenheit. And in C, for those of you using Celsius, that is uh, 24.9. At least that's what it's showing there. 76.8, because it comes down pretty quickly here. So that's what we've got here as a baseline. So let's go ahead and start our ADA 64. Let this thing heat up the system and let's see how hot it gets to. Transition. <laughs> I've had the test going now for uh, over 10 minutes. I stopped it for a second there and forgot to hit record on the camera. Anyway, um, ambient temperature in the room is still 75.2. And I have had the thermometer up here measuring the temperature exiting the case with this thing going at 100%. And as you can see, we actually did get a little bit of throttling here on the CPU due to temperature. We actually hit 100C on the first core several times. So ju that's just to show you here that we are pushing this thing for as much heat as we possibly can. I don't recommend actually doing that and forcing your CPU to go all the way to throttling temps, but I wanted to exacerbate. That's exacerbate, not the other word. I wanted to kind of exacerbate the situation as best I can to get these tests uh, you know, as, as concrete as possible. So anyway, we're gonna remove this now and the air leaving the case is at 78.6 degrees Fahrenheit or uh, 26C. So as you can see, it's the, the, I mean, we could pretty much already call this conclusive if we wanted to, where the air that is exiting the case 
is hardly heated up by the air entering the case, at least with the H100i. If I go ahead and set this thing on the front so that it's measuring the air that's coming down, it's, it does, if you guys are curious about whether or not the S340 can actually pull air in very well or if it's too obstructed, you can see this little blade right here will actually move due to the airflow and tell you how much air is actually going in there. And I believe you guys will actually be able to see this. Let's double check here. So if I set this thing on the front of the case right here, check this out. See that? It is pulling air in just fine. So we'll let that measure the intake temperature right now. Intake temperature going into the front of the case. Let that go for just a second here. Because it takes time to actually measure and balance it out. All right, 77.9 degrees Fahrenheit is what's entering the case. And what is exiting the case, 78.6. So do you see how the front intake radiator, at least on a setup like this, is not really doing a whole lot in terms of heating up the system? Uh, there's that test. Let's go ahead and do this now. Let's go ahead and take, uh, in fact, I'm gonna skip taking the side panel off for the CPU test. There's really no point. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and stop this now. I don't wanna be doing too much more throttling on my CPU. See, the temperatures came down really quickly, back down to the 30s on the core. Let's let things cool off, and then we're gonna go ahead and run a uh, GPU test on this, and then we'll see if the GPU temperatures rise at all if we do it right after running a stressful CPU test. I really don't think that's gonna be the case just based on the numbers that we've already seen. Now, I'm not using an opinion here. I'm using a thermometer to do the test. So, I don't see how you know, this could be an opinion thing. This is just flat out, what does the thermometer say? Anyway. Go from there. Okay, so what I've done right now is I've loaded up GPU uh, tests for Valley Benchmark, and we have overclocked the GPU 100 megahertz, left it at stock voltage, and I have also raised the thermal uh, threshold for the GPU to 91 degrees Celsius in MSI Afterburner, and we're gonna let the test run and run and run until things have balanced out. I think we're pretty much already there based on my previous test where we're hitting 84 degrees Celsius on the GPU. So that's below our maximum temperature in GPU Boost 2.0, which means that the core right now is running 100%. It's not being thermal throttled at all. And then we are going to heat up uh, the H100i as best we can by running A to 64 and then switching to Valley and seeing if we got any difference in temperatures. And then if we did, we'll take the side panel off and compare. If we didn't, and the GPU didn't throttle at all, then we can go ahead and call this test uh, complete, I guess. Okay, so I've had Valley going for I don't know how long now, at least 15 minutes. Temperatures are very stabilized. Ambient temp is 78 Fahrenheit on the dot, and uh, that's 25.6 C. So the temperature in the room went up a couple of degrees simply because of the graphics card. That's important to note because remember, when we did this with the CPU test, temperatures didn't really rise at all. Uh, temperatures exiting the case right now. Remember, the CPU is under small load when you're doing gaming. Gaming does not put a huge load on the CPU, so I don't expect this to be a whole lot different here, especially since we have a blower style card. I already explained why I went with that. 79.7 uh, Fahrenheit case temperature, and uh, that's going to be 26.5 C. So as you can see, only a few degrees, like three degrees raised on the case temperature at all. Now what our maximum GPU temp get to? Our max temperature, whoops, our max temperature was, uh, yeah, it looks like we've got a max temperature of about 85, 86, we hit 86 once. All right, so the next thing we gotta do now, let's go ahead and load up that CPU again. Let's make that nice and toasty, and then let's switch to, it, to Valley and see if we get any higher temperatures. I don't think we're going to quite honestly. I think the GPU is so hot, it, it's gonna create its own atmospheric issue where we're gonna see more issues happening with the GPU than we are with anything CPU radiator wise, causing any problems for anything in the system. But if we open up Corsair Link and look at the temperatures, I mean, shoot, we've got 23 degrees Celsius on the, on the hard drive, 35 degrees Celsius on the motherboard, 35C on the other uh, spot on the motherboard that it measures. I mean, 29C on another motherboard temperature location. I think, I think we're starting to get our results here, guys. So Valley has been looping and looping and looping and looks like we're sitting at a maximum temperature once again of 86 degrees uh, 
Fahrenheit, or Celsius on the graphics card, my bad. And uh, case temperature is sitting at 86.1 degrees Celsius, or Fahrenheit. Dang, I can't get those numbers straight. Okay, 86 Fahrenheit in the case. For Celsius, that's uh, about 30 degrees Celsius. So one thing to keep in mind here is that the ambient temperature in this room has gone up considerably because the graphics card is putting off a lot of heat. So a lot of that raise in temperature is actually attributed to the graphics card and the amount of heat it's putting off, more so than the fact that you, the CPU and the front-mounted radiator was affecting anything. In fact, if we look at the curve here for the CPU, everything stays pretty consistent. Everything for the graphics card temperature-wise, as you can see right here, stays very, very consistent on temperature. In fact, we even dipped down a little bit and came back up slightly. So there's a lot of things that could be factoring temperatures, not just the location of your radiator. One last thing I wanna do before we talk about conclusions is I wanna try and run both at the same time and see how much it really does affect things. Now I'm gonna to have to actually take my overclock off of the graphics card because I tried doing this once already and I ended up getting instability on the graphics card as the CPU was at 100% load. And so, believe it or not, your CPU stability can affect what appears to be your graphics card overclock, but could also be your CPU causing problems as well. Ambient temperature in the room right now, uh, 84.5 degrees Fahrenheit, 29.1 C. So you can see the temperature in the room is going up and equally the system temperature is going up as well. It's kind of funny how that works, huh? Anyone who understands temperature and physics or in thermodynamics will know exactly why that makes sense. Okay, so both Valley Benchmark and ADA64 have been running for quite a while now. You can see the CPU temp in the case there is at 90C on the socket. Exhaust temperature on the top of the case is at 83.4 degrees Fahrenheit. It actually came down a little bit. Uh, for Celsius, that's 28.5. Now, if you want to see something contrast, actually, we'll, we'll take a quick reading of the rear by the graphics card. And that'll give you some insight as to why the temperature in the room came up as I started the graphics card tests. Okay, so I've been sitting here with my hand pretty much being toasted alive on the back of this Titan X. Remember, this is not overclocked right now. This is factory temperature. Graphics card's currently running at 83 Celsius. We came down three degrees Celsius from the overclock and the rear temperature, the air exiting the back of the graphics card, 136.4 Fahrenheit, 56, actually it's coming down, obviously it's away from it. So let's say 55 degrees Celsius is the temperature of the air coming off the back. Ooh, that's warm. So let's go ahead and talk about some final thoughts in all of this. Now, one reason I didn't bother taking the side panel off whatsoever was the fact that our test that we did first pretty much concluded that even though the CPU was running full speed, even throttling a little bit, that we were only getting a couple of degrees difference in temperature between the intake temp and the exhaust temp. So to me, that meant that the H100i was not really heating up the air enough to make any sort of difference. I think we saw, what, three degrees Fahrenheit difference in temperatures. It wasn't a lot. Now, what you saw here was the fact that the GPU alone makes more difference to the entire room's temperature, which is going to affect the entire system temperature than anything else in your system. Now, I'm not saying that front-mounted radiators won't affect your temperatures. I can guarantee you right now that if I took my Skunk Works system here, and I put the GPUs on a radiator that's front mounted, we would see a system pressure or system temperature increase on all the components across the board. And the reason for that is it comes down to watts displaced by the radiator. There becomes a point where you have more radiator than is necessary, so it only gets to a certain operating temperature and that's it. But what happens is when you have an undersized radiator and too much wattage, being pushed through that radiator, then you end up having heat soak where it gets hotter and hotter and hotter. Now, something else I also did to try and make this test as absolutely as worst case scenario as I could was I ran the fan profiles on the H100i at balanced because I didn't want it to overcompensate by running a ton of air through it, which would obviously cool it off and would make the case cooling much more of a factor than how much the H100i is heating up the temperature inside the case, if that makes any sense to you guys. So running it balanced, it only ran about 1300, maybe 1400 RPM fluctuating back and forth, and maximum RPMs of those static pressure fans. Now don't misquote me here because I am not saying front mounted radiators will not affect the overall system temperatures, they will. And as you saw here, it affected us only a couple of degrees. But if we had 
more heat going through that radiator, let's say we had the graphics cards or the CPU and everything in a single loop, then yeah, the entire system temperature would rise. But then again, if the parts that are mostly being cooled by the radiator are part of that loop, then the only things that are gonna make any sort of difference would be like motherboard temperatures and MOSFETs and things like that, which can be affected by those. But unfortunately, there's no way to really measure those in this test because it's an all-in-one cooling loop. That's something that would be a much more in-depth test later on. But there's physics involved here and physics cannot be twisted and changed by opinion. And what I wanna tell you now is if that you have a case like the S340 or other cases that really only offer front-mounted options for all-in-one water cooling loops or even custom loops, don't be concerned about it causing any sort of temperature damage to your system. It's not gonna happen. I've seen all kinds of misconceptions out there and flat out wrong information being regurgitated and thrown up all over the community of people saying front-mounted radiators will cause your system to overheat. And it's just a flat out lie. There's more to it than being cut and dry like that. And in your most, most situations, it's not going to matter. So build in your case, put the radiator in the front if that's where you wanna pull it, put it and stop worrying about it. Play some games, have some fun, watch some more of my videos if you want, but I'm gonna get out of here because I am heading to PDX land tomorrow morning. Today is Wednesday, so this is the same day video. I'm heading to PDX land, I'll be hanging out with Jerry, Maybe we'll do another Q&A video or something. Those are always fun. I'm not doing another drunk tech talk. Don't ask. Don't even bother. Don't waste your time. Anyway, guys, we'll see you there. I'll be doing a huge live stream like all weekend long from PDX. So make sure you guys are there to check that out. It's going to be on my Twitch channel. My Twitch name is Jay's VFX. J-A-Y-S VFX, not Jay's Two Cents. Anyway, guys, I'm going to get out of here. We will see you in the live stream. Follow on Twitter if you want to know when it's going live at Jay's Two Cents. Enough shameful plugs. You know, it makes me happy. When you guys follow me and say, Jay, we love you because I love you guys too. Anyway, time to go. We'll see you in Portland. Well, Seattle first, then Portland. You know, I got to pick up Jerry first. Someone's got to control that guy. My God, that guy, that guy.